Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about multiple plunge points. How can we do that in Feature Cam? So what I'm going to do here is I have four bosses that I'm going to cut all this material out. So I'm going to go ahead and select those four bosses. So again, you're learning that I always select first. I'm going to say New Feature. Notice it defaulted to Boss. I'm just going to go ahead and say finish. All right. I know it's going to cut the outside of each one and it's going to want to cut the stock away. Also, but I want to just tell it that I'm only cutting 200 deep. So again, feature cam, as far as tool selection goes, it, didn't ha it did not have any internal radiuses anywhere, but it did have the distance across here. So it picked a tool, the biggest tool it could find that could fit through this gap here. So if we open up that feature and take a quick peek, it's using a three quarter inch end mill. So let's go ahead and play that in the center line mode and play. And you can kind of see here that at some point it ramped down through the middle to cut out this interior portion. Well, let's say we do not have a center cutting tool. We don't want to plunge over in the middle. We want to plunge somewhere out off the part and have it feed down to cut the middle out. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go back to top view. And in this particular example, my stock, I can see here is five inches square. So what I'm going to do is create a curve. So I'm going to go to my curves, other methods, and create a curve, a rectangle curve. And I'm going to tell it I want to define the center as zero 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 and I want it to be six inches square do a little preview here and that's what I want it's going to create a curve seven and I might even change this and call it plunge and I'm going to say finish so I, have, I haven't done anything except created this curve around the outside called plunge all right now I'm going to open up my feature Go to the roughing tool on the plunge tab. So down here it says plunge points. Well, if it's a, just a physical point by itself, I'd use this first button. But it's an actual curve. So I'm going to pick the little curve button. Just pick this anywhere. And you can see it put the curve in there. And I'm going to tell it I don't need to ramp just to make sure it's not ramping anywhere. But what it does, you can kind of see here on my curve that it has physical little markers at all the intersections of my curve. And those are what I'll call possible plunge points. So I'm going to go ahead and say, OK. Let's quickly play it in wireframe. And first of all, you can see that <clears throat> it's actually, when it comes to this area, it says, oh, well, there's a plunge point there. So it plunges on that particular point. And when it comes over here somewhere, it says, oh, there's a plunge point. And of course, this is all with your roughing tool. But notice here for the center that it's plunging all the way out here at this one. So if we go ahead and play this in 3D, I'm going to tell it to play to next rapid. So it plunged over there and cut that. Now it wants to go to the middle, but it's plunging over here. Then it plunges in this corner and so forth. So my point being is um, I didn't necessarily need all those plunge points because it was going to plunge out here no matter what to do these corners. But more importantly, when it went to do the center, it plunged at one of these four places and then fed all the way across to machine the center. Now, if I only picked one point out here, it would want to attempt to try to plunge all these places from that point, and that wouldn't make much sense. That's why I went ahead and did the four. But a lot of times, I create an elaborate pocket of some sort, and I might have a bunch of holes that are, are already there, and I'd rather the tool plunge in those holes. So my point being in this exercise is you can have multiple plunge points and the way to do that is to have a, create a curve, and at every 
intersection or endpoint of that curve becomes a possible plunge point. Now, I say possible because uh, if it can't physically plunge there to get to where it's got to go, it won't. So, anyway, that's multiple plunge points.